Good morning, Fantasy Art fans. Welcome to the channel. Today's video is a little bit of a combination of a mail day video and a Fantasy Art discussion. So in today's mail, um, I got an exciting package from Jeff Mingus, the artist. Uh, this is a sorcery play mat that sorcery came out with. They have a limited number of four different play mats that they commissioned that uh, were limited to 100 copies. And this was the play mat that was drawn by Jeff Mangus. Uh, he also signed my MagicCon Minneapolis Loading Ready Run play mat in MagicCon Minneapolis, if you remember those videos from last year. Um, so Jeff sent me this mat, which I purchased from Jeff. He said, hey, Jeremy, hope all is well and you're enjoying sorcery. It's been a really great thing for me. All the best and hope to see you soon, Jeff Mangus. And I'll pull it out of this plastic sleeve here so we can take a better look at it. And it is the Watchtower playmat, which is absolutely beautiful. It's the same size as the regular playmats, like, what is that, like 24 by 30, no, 24 by 22 or something like that. I mean, 33 by 22 maybe. Uh, but this is one half of a two player playmat for sorcery, where you put your avatar here and then you have the grid. Uh, this is just beautiful art by Jeff Mangus. And he numbered and signed these down at the bottom here. This one is number 87 out of 100. It's the Artist Series playmat. There's three other playmats in this series. And what Jeff did is he numbered all of them, but he signed and sold 50 of them first. And then he's gonna take the other 50 of them with him to the uh, art shows and sorcery, sorcery conventions and magic cons. So if you're interested in one of these uh, sorcery limited edition artist series playmats. Uh, you can follow Jeff's tour schedule and pick one of these up from Jeff. I highly recommend his artwork. Um, I don't necessarily recommend collecting playmats. They take up a ton of room in uh, your collection and uh, they get kind of heavy. I think when I started this this YouTube channel over 18 months ago, I had maybe just a handful of playmats, maybe two or three playmats in my collection. Um, and I, but for making videos, I noticed that the, the one or two playmats that I was using over and over were sort of uh, redundant. And so as, uh, as the months went on, I picked up more playmats for the channel and I've been using them as backdrops and I think they're absolutely fantastic. Now that I'm getting into playing sorcery, I have about uh, five, six or seven sorcery playmats of different kinds that I can use to play sorcery. Um, I also had a mail day which was more Jeff Mangus themed cards. Um, he did a great interview on the Cardboard Guides video with Sophie and Jens, and he talked about his original days in Magic the Gathering, and his, mostly his work in sorcery, but how he started in Magic and fantasy art before that. So I picked up a copy of Battering Ram. This is uh, from Antiquities. Uh, this is Jeff Mangus art and it is an artifact for two colorless. It bans, but only when attacking and any wall blocking battering ram is destroyed. Walls destroyed this way are deal their damage before dying. Um, it is a one, one artifact creature. So that's battering ram from antiquities. Uh, during the interview, they also asked Jeff about uh, his, you know, like a lot, there's six, including Jeff Mangus, there's six current artists doing work for sorcery and some of them like Drew Tucker are doing art in the current sets. And so they asked Jeff Mangus about his artwork in the current sets of magic. And he said he hasn't done any magic recently. Um, the last card that Jeff Mangus illustrated for sorcery was called um, Thalakos Lowlands from Tempest back in 1997. So I picked up a play set of Thalakos Lowlands that I'll get Jeff Mangus to sign at the next convention that I see Jeff at. Uh, it's possibly one of the sorcery conventions in Baltimore or Washington, DC. Uh, and if he's at MagicCon Las Vegas, we'll probably see Jeff there. Um, speaking of MagicCon Las Vegas, I picked up some, some cards and some blank packs of Fallen Empires to get the artist to sign, which is a fun project. Every, every convention I go to, I usually take some older booster packs and get the old school vintage magic artists to sign those packs. Um, and then these are all cards that are unsigned, but uh, I'll take them with me to 
complete play sets and get them signed by the artists. Uh, one of which is a, just a basic disenchant that Richard Keen Ferguson drew for the Brothers War set. Now I have a play set of disenchants. Uh, Mind Bomb by Mark Tadine from 4th edition and the Darks. So and I have a play set of Mind Bombs to get signed. If I have any extras, I can try to get Mark to alter them, but usually have to be first in line on Friday morning to have a chance at getting anything altered by Mark. Once his line fills up, uh, it's pretty tough to get anything altered. This is a playset of Second Chance, also by Mark Tedden. This is a rare from Urza's Legacy. And uh, during your upkeep, let's see here, Urza's Chance, Second Chance. During your upkeep, if you have five or less life, you sacrifice Second Chance. Take an extra turn after this one. The greatest gift is the opportunity to right one's wrongs. Two colorless and a blue is an enchantment. It's rare, also came in foil. And then I am going to complete this playset of Howling Mine. These, I had one of these, I pulled one of these in my Brother's War box opening if you wanna see Brother's War, but this is the schematic art drawn by Mark Poole. So I'll get Mark to sign a playset of Howling Mines. I picked up some extra Birds of Paradises from Dominaria Remastered. This is the retro frame. I'll get Mark to sign those. I like to get them signed in green sometimes. And I think the last card I picked up, maybe, uh, magic related, is a, another copy of Lightning Dragon from Urza's Saga. This was the very first pre-release card in foil from September 26, 1998. So now I have a playset of Lightning Dragons. Uh, if Ron Spencer goes to event, I'll get him to sign those. And then um, the second part of this video, I'm gonna showcase some more of Jeff Mangus's awesome art from the sorcery. So those are all, that's the magic portion of the show today. I'll keep Jeff's battering ram up there. Now what I have is all the sorcery cards that I wanna get Jeff Mangus to sign at the next sorcery convention that I go to. Um, this is all, I think these are all of the, at least the Ordinaries, Exceptionals, and Elites um, and that Jeff did. But it's a good stack. It's probably 50 cards. So if I already have Jeff sign these, it would take a good chunk of time and change. But uh, I just want to showcase these today on the channel to show you the beautiful art that Jeff did in Sorcery. He did Aqueduct, which is an exceptional site. So you can play three of those in your deck. So I saved three copies of Aqueduct. Uh, Eremos Mercenaries is an Ordinary Mortal, so I have four copies of the Ordinaries. Blizzard is sort of a landscape. Um, he talked about this on the Cardboard Guide interview about where he now lives, subject to blizzards. So that painting came particularly fun for him to draw. Then there's a Bone Rabble, also an Ordinary, so I got four copies of Bone Rabble. Buried Treasure is an exceptional, so there's three copies of Buried Treasure. Then I have the Felbog Frogman, which is a, an exceptional beast, so three copies of that exceptional. Fenvale Muse is an ordinary mortal, so four copies of Fenvale Muse. Same thing, Miracle Worker, I like the art on Miracle Worker. This is a mortal that plays well in sorcery, so that'll be getting signed three copies of Monster Hunter, which is an exceptional mortal. It's like in the castle with the trees in the background. Very iconic Jeff Mangus art, I love that. We have Ogre Goons, this is an ordinary ogre. So four copies of Ogre Goons. Let's put Blizzard down here as well. Then I have some Rubble Tokens. Jeff Mangus did the Rubble Tokens in Sorcery, so I'll have Jeff sign this awesome epic landscape rubble card for us. Uh, Sunken Treasure is an exceptional relic, so that will get signed. Swiven Scout is an exceptional mortal. We'll get three copies of Swiven Scout to get signed. Vile Imp, probably one of my favorite cards because it's the, it replaces the Frank Frazetta artwork from the Alpha Edition. So this is some beta Vile Imps done by Jeff Mingus. We'll get a ton of those signed. Maybe a set in Silver or gold, and maybe like a set in black sharpie. Then we have a Wayfaring Pilgrim, the last exceptional mortal. 
in the stack. And then we have a couple more sites. We have Vantage Hills. This is an exceptional site. So that will get signed. And then my favorite is Watchtower, which is this playmat here, the Watchtower playmat. Very cool. So those are all non-foil. You can see that it just says the Atlas on the back of these. So that's a Watchtower. It's an air site and enemy units atop nearby site permanently lose stealth. And then I do have a few foil cards from my sorcery collection that I will get Jeff Mangus to sign as well. I don't have all of them, but I do have enough. And maybe by the time I get to the convention, uh, I'll have several more. Uh, but this is the Blink Blizzard Error foil. So if you notice, this is the Blink artwork from the Blink card, from the Blizzard card. It's a Blizzard artwork from the Blizzard card, but the text box on the card is actually Blink. And it's the Ordinary Magic of um, Tactical Transmission. And so this is actually the Blink text box. But the art is Jeff Mangus. The back art is the Blizzard. That's also by Jeff Mangus. So I'll put that right there on the Blink Blizzard card. Uh, Bone Rabble by Jeff Mangus with the full art on the back. We have Miracle Workers. Um, I think I'll get them to sign on the back. Let me know in the comments if you have sorcery cards, where would you get the artist to sign? Uh, I'm thinking front of the card, if it's the non-foil, just have it right, right by the art. But if it's the foil, I think I would get the artist to sign on the back kind of right where the text box is. So the text box is probably not on the back, but it's probably where I'd get the artist to sign. So let me know if, if you agree, if you think that's the best spot. I haven't gotten any magic slash sorcery artist to sign any sorcery cards yet, so I, I haven't committed yet, but I'm thinking foil cards are gonna get signed, bam, right on the back, just like that. So let me know. And then last but not least, uh, I'll wrap up this video. Um, with the watchtower foil there's the watchtower foil just like that that goes with the watchtower playmat um, and two copies of mordric druids which is an elite this is probably one of the best cards that jeff got assigned to in sorcery uh, you can play two of these in your spell book so i've got two copies of mordric druids those are going to get signed i just like the art uh, in the video on cardboard guide i think he mentioned that um Eric at Eric's Curiosa maybe purchased the original art from him. Um, liked that original artwork. Um, actually, sneak peek too. Um, I do have some original artwork from Jeff Mangus. So I'm gonna just flash this on the channel if you're sticking around this far too. This happens to be a piece that Jeff did for Fantasy Art Magazine or some game back in the early 90s. This was dated. 1990 and I picked this up from him at IlexCon a couple years ago. Uh, if you go to, if you see Jeff at, or any of the sorcery artists really, at like magic cons or sorcery conventions, uh, sometimes they'll bring artwork with them to sell a lot of prints they sell. This is actual, this is actual art, not a print. This is ink on paper. You can see like, if you hold it up to the light, you can see the actual pen strokes, brush strokes, pencil, pencil strokes on here. It's a really cool piece of art. It predates Magic the Gathering by three years. Um, a lot of those artists were that were working for Wizards of the Coast in the time uh, started doing fantasy stuff in the late 1980s, early 1990s. So they may have been working for Wizards doing Dungeons and Dragons and board game type art before card games were started. But Jeff was one of those artists. Um, so this is a very cool piece of fantasy art history that I share with you today. Uh, similarly, he did more recently, he did some art for non trading card games, non fantasy related things. This was a sketch uh, for of a wolf. He does a, lo a lot of animal drawings. This is uh, with some cats on it. It was because it was for a fundraiser for the Long Island Feline Adoption Center. Um, I have a cat, I'm a fan of feline rescue. So this just happens to be a, an original sketch that he sold at LuxCon. Um, don't think he brings these with him to magic cons or sorcery cons, but if you catch him at, at like Illux con or any of the other fantasy art conventions, you can get some of his work there. Uh, it was produced. They, what they did is they produced a token for this event. It was a wolf token for the cat draft two back in 2016. So the sketch is dated 2016 by Jeff Mangus. It's signed in pencil. And then he gave me a copy of the 
the wolf token from the cat draft that was done at the Long Island Adoption Center. And you can see that that art matches the sketch here. I think that's a really cool piece. I may get that framed someday and hang that on my wall with all my fantasy art. But that's uh, the wolf with the cats. And that's all my Jeff Mangus um, art for the day. I appreciate everybody for watching the video. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked any of the cards on the channel. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this as we approach conventions uh, and meet the artists and talk about their stories here on the channel. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for watching.